Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, again, you know, uh, uh, we want this uh, video to stay at least for a few hours before we take it down. Uh, so please, you know, like I'm not sure to, to keep the chat on or not. But I think it's a good idea to disable the chat to avoid the problem with YouTube. Uh, the purpose of us here is not the chat, it is uh, the video. So say hello before we disactivate the chat so we will concentrate only and we will not be worried about YouTube complaining about our video because they use your words uh, as a reason uh, you know uh, to stop us or to take our videos down. Uh, today our topic is very simple. Uh, a Muslim he make the video complain about the translation of our brother Osama Dakdok. Uh, Osama Dakdok, you have a translation for the Quran, it's called the Generous Quran. Uh, you can get your copy online. And this translation is making the Muslims upset. But, you know, always when the Muslim they say uh, something, they complain about something. The question is, can you find me a Muslim who don't complain about translation? To make it simple, which translation the Muslims active, you know, accept? Forget about Osama Dakto. Osama Dakto is a Christian. He is a Coptic, Egyptian. He don't like Islam. You know, okay. So what translation you accept? The answer is zero. And I challenge the one who we are going to speak about his video to say to me, I have a translation I accept. Just name one. Don't tell me from all the translations exist made by Muslims, not by Coptic or Christian. Which one is the one you accept? And if there's none, then the question why there's none? You know what I'm saying, guys? If there's none, why there is none? A challenge for all Muslims to show me a translation they accept. I will stop the, the chat for now. All right. Forgive me for that. So we can focus in the, uh, in the topic. And people will focus in my video because I notice when the chat is on, people, they focus more on um, talking to each other. So let us see what this gentleman, and actually I invite him to call me, and I'm willing to take him. Have a nice conversation with him and let us see what he have to say if there's any good there let us see what he have to say today i had a christian gentleman come up to me and tell me that the quran itself commands us to worship god and jesus hey, hold on we need to make him come in the screen give me a second All right, he is in the screen now. I said, what? And he said, the Quran itself tells you to worship God and Jesus. And he had a smirk on his face. And I thought, well, this is going to be interesting. So show me where in the Quran it says that. So he showed me chapter 9, verse 31. Chapter 9 is Surah Toba. And in verse 31, it's basically criticizing the Jews and Christians for engaging in false worship. And the verse says, they, meaning the Jews and or the Christians, they took their priests and their monks as lords rather than God and the Christ. I'll repeat that. They took their priests and their monks as lords besides God or rather than God and the Christ. So upon that English reading, upon that English translation of the Quran, it definitely sounds as if the Quran is saying that the Jews and the Christians are supposed to be worshipping God and Jesus. But instead of worshipping God and Jesus, they took their priests and their monks as gods or they gave them too much authority, more than they should have. So I asked this Christian gentleman, can I see who's done this translation? And the translation was done by a Coptic Egyptian American Christian named Osama Dak Dok. Now in this English translation of his, he hasn't included the original Arabic Quran. But this is clearly, clearly 
a purposeful mistranslation of the Quran. When you look at Usama Dakdok's translation of the Quran, which he's named the Generous Quran, on the back of the book, as you can see here, he says that Arabic is his first language. Now, Arabic is not my first language. Arabic is not the first language of most Muslims. But even the basic grasp that I have of Quranic Arabic tells me that his translation is way off. Now, before I even get... All right. So your language is not Arabic, but you are going... So, like, I understand when a Muslim, he, is, he speak Arabic, he's correcting somebody claiming, let us say, I mean, Arab, debating Arab. You know, I mean, it makes sense more, like, you know, somebody he speak Arabic, he said to the other person, well, I speak Arabic too, it doesn't say that, so it doesn't say that, CP, you know, but this guy doesn't even speak Arabic. And he is going to prove to us that the translation of Sam Adak talk is wrong. Question, what translation you accept? What you Muslim translation you accept? Forget about Sam Adak talk. Usama Daktok is a Christian. He is uh, not giving you correct translation as you are trying to say. It's fabricated translation, whatever you want to say. What, what the translation you accept? And then if we watch what he will say, you, you will die laughing at the answer. Look at the answer. Get into the Arabic grammar of my argument. Let me just say... Arabic grammar. Arabic grammar. First of all, Arabic never have a grammar. It's a person who is not an Arab. He is the one who put the grammar long after your prophet. <laughs> and you Muslim, you try to make the grammar work with your Quran. All of us we knew. The grammar never exists in Arabic. Nobody uses grammar. The one who came with it is a someone is not an Arab and long after your Muhammad died. So what the grammar you are talking about? As an example, is it Arabic a grammar? that your Quran do not know how to write a word? If we go to the first chapter in the Quran, the first chapter, which by the way is not the first chapter. I mean, you Muslim, you play in the Quran and all of you agree. The first chapter was given to Muhammad. is not the chapter one, which is exists today as a chapter one. Isn't it the one who your prophet been squeezed and then he gave him the chapter in the cave? So why this is what chapter one? But look what Muhammad he did. Uh, sorry, the Muslims did it too. Is that a grammar in Arabic to say bism? Since when we have a language, we have Arabic language, it says bism. What bism mean? In which language this word is written like this? The first word in the Quran is wrong. The word Quran itself, it's wrong. There's nothing that's called Quran. Unless you are speaking Aramaic, so you say, uh, you know, uh, you are trying to copy the Aramaic people, but you pronounce it wrong. What Quran? <laughs> this is the most funny word ever. So the, the first Arabic word in the Quran is wrong. And you are teaching me about the grammar. We can get you tons of words in Arabic. In the Quran is false. It is wrong. It is misspelled, mis, uh, it's, it's miswritten. And by the way, and not only that, the Muslim scholar, they say to you, the letter, the, the word here, Bism, which is not Bism, it is Bism. Like if we ask the Muslim now, this guy, is this word wrong? What you will say? He will say no. So this is written correctly? He will say sure. Okay. Grammar. Let us see the grammar. So if I go now and I find the same word written differently, is that a mistake then? Is it possible the same word is written twice differently in Arabic? The same exact word. Is that possible? Is this word look exactly the same as this word? No, there's an alif, he's missing, letter A. So how come? Because the Quran is a messed up book. So first of all, don't start with the grammar. You Muslims, you even change, you bend the language of Arabic to make it fit with thinking. So the scholars, they say, the Muslim scholars, they say, the reason, the reason that the word bi'ism, the first word in the Quran, became bism because it's not suitable 
for reciting the Quran. It's hard, like Bismillah. So we want to sing it. So what we do? We delete a letter. We do what? We do. We delete a letter. How you how you say you Muslims that we preserve every letter in the Quran, and then you delete a letter just for the sake of singing a verse. So never speak about the grammar because we can find you. The whole Quran is a messed up, is out of a grammar. If I ask you how you write the word Hayat, Hayat, is it Hayat? Is it Hayawat? Is it Hayawanat? <laughs> So, you know, your God, you do not know how to write words. And the Muslims, you know, in, in the Quran today, they, they try to correct it and do their best to change the Quran, how it is written. You will find the Quran do not know how to write a basic words. And if we go back, Have you ever heard of Ar Rahman written like this? This is how Ar Rahman is written? In which language? Have you ever heard of the word Allah is written like this? In which language? If we go and see the old Quran, we will not we will find that this is not really what the Quran was saying, and it's not what the Quran was writing. Rahman is not the same, Allah is not the same. Basim is not the same. Even Ar Rahim is not the same. There is a video of a guy, his name Norman Khan. Norman Khan. And this guy, Norman Khan, he, uh, he make videos showing you that how you can read uh, words uh, uh, in two direction. Like suppose this is a miracle in the Quran. So look what Norman Khan he do. And you can go watch his videos and laugh with me. You will find that every time we have those Shadda and Fatha and Kasra, which is something ad 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 additional to the Quran, those Shadda mean there is two letters. As an example, when I say Ar Rahman, Ar Rahman, let us type Ar Rahman. Huh? Sorry, Al Rahman. If I try to type it as the Quran, will come like this. But that's stupid because there's Aleph is missing. So what is Rahman? A Rahman is like this. But even this one is wrong. Why? Because it is Ar Rahman, Ar Rahman. There's two Ra, two letters. So what happened? The answer is very simple. There is a guy who is not even an Arab. He said to you, you Arab, why you are being an idiot? Instead of saying the letter twice, we will put a sign in the top and what we will call it Shadda, which means you extend the letter. So those two letters, instead of writing them twice or saying them twice, we put this. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. And this is why when the Muslim, they count for us the number 19 as a miracle, if you remember, they are cheating and they are lying because there's more than four to five letters additional to this verse. They are not 19. There's a Shadda here on the top of Allah, which means there's two L. You see Shadda, you see it? There's Shadda in Ar-Ra. There's a Shadda in Ar-Ra here. And there's an Alif, small Alif here in Ar-Rahman. Why you make it small? Why you take it off? They say this is a, a, a drawing. So you manipulate the language just to make it fit with your recitation. So what the Muslims, they do, they bend the Arabic language, which is a very strong language, but became a crocked language in the Quran. And actually this video is a proving to us that the Quran is a crocked book. How? Listen carefully what this guy will say. Be my witness. The Muslim, they will say to you, the Quran is a crocked book, is misleading book. It's bad as a language. How? Listen carefully. 
say that even common sense will take us where we need to get to. How is it possible, just using common sense, how is it possible that the Quran, a book which criticizes Christians for worshiping Jesus, how can that same book be then telling you elsewhere that the Christians are supposed to be worshiping God and Jesus? That's a good question. That's a wonderful question. How the Quran, and he is quoting for you verses from the Quran, showing you that the Quran criticized the Christians for worshiping Jesus. So how a verse in the Quran saying, worship Jesus. This is a question you should answer yourself. Because how the Quran says we worship Jesus and we will go to hell, and then the Quran says that Christians will go to heaven. You tell me. Is that your Quran or my Quran? Chapter 2, verse number 62. What kind of a book? In one page he say Christians, Jews, and even Sabian, which is like Hindus. But different, it's different religion, but I'm saying to you how far it is from Christianity and Judaism. Those who believe in the Quran, okay, wonderful. This is your translation, not my translation. Don't tell me this is the same adapter. And those who follow the Jewish scriptures, hmm, does it say really those who follow Jewish scriptures? No, it says the hadu. The Jews, what follow Jewish scriptures? Where is the word scriptures there? I mean, you will not find a Muslim complaining about Muslim translation, but the second your name is Osama Dakdok, they complain. Can you show me where it says the scriptures in the verse? Yahud or Hadu is a scriptures? Nasara is a scriptures now? So if Osama Dakdok, he add that word, they will say to you, oh, look, Osama, he added, he should not add it. It doesn't say that. But look at the promise. And by the way, we can change the translator if you don't like him. Because you can be upset from Yusuf Ali. Maybe Yusuf Ali is not a Muslim. What about we go to Hilali and Khan? Muhammad Hilali and Muhammad Khan. He's Pakistani like you, I think. Huh? And remember, Ah, sorry, we are reading the different verse. Verily, those who believe and those who are the Jews. Look how it translated, the translation changed. One translation saying those who follow the scriptures and the other one saying those who they are Jews. There's a huge difference between those who follow the scriptures and those who they are Jews. Because not every Jew, he follows scriptures and not everyone he call himself Christian is a Christian, he follows scriptures. So look at the misrepresentation for their book in order to deceive you and to fool you. Now, you said very important point. How the Quran is the same book who say Christians and Jews should not worship Jesus as God. Yet the same book says the Christians should go to heaven. I will give you the answer. They will say to you, oh, Allah was talking about the Christians who follow the true, the true belief of Christianity. I thought there's none of them. <laughs> and do you see here, it says some of the Christians, or it says the Christians. Does it say some of the Jews, or it says the Jews? Those who are Jews and those who they are a Christian and the top of that, the Sabian. How in the world the Sabians who worship stars will go to heaven? So when you say the Quran forbid the Muslims from worshiping Jesus and telling the Christian not to do so, it's the same Quran saying Christians who worship Jesus are going to go to heaven. And now to cover up to this stupid verse, you will say, oh, let us see the, the, the interpretation. I challenge this guy to say I accept interpretation and to name one. He will not. Let us make it simple. Do you accept the interpretation of Ibn Kathir, Al Qurtubi, Al Tabari, Al Jalalain? Choose one. Ibn Abbas. You will see. He will say, oh, I don't accept translations. They are people. We follow God, not people. But you are people too. Your God saying Christians and Jews and Sabian are going to go to heaven. And if you are trying to say, and this is what you are trying to say actually, that this would be a contradiction, right? This is the point. 
how Allah he say in those verses don't worship Jesus because that would be a contradiction well this is a contradiction already and the Quran is full of it actually the Quran is the book of contradictions I'm sure many people are laughing at what you said because either the Christians are the one who follow you see the word here is Nasara okay who is the Nasara in the time of Muhammad was Muhammad promising people who are not alive not, not, not alive in his time that would be stupid those who believe now and those who are in present this is your Muslim translation this is not Osama Daktok this and those who are Jews are not somebody pass away in former generation and those who they are Christians and the Sabian and whoever believe in Allah I mean who is left Muhammad at that time he's doing put uh, you know uh, politician business he want everybody to join him actually even the Arab they call him the Sabi the Sabian why in the beginning of his life this guy he was changing religion I believe strongly that he was an Asara you know if you remember we made a video not long time ago about Muhammad marrying Khadija the rich woman in the age of his mother just for the sake of his her money not because he loved her it's possible that a man he marry a woman she is way older than him it's possible but it's obvious this guy he worked for her she's very rich and she is Nasara the Muslim they say I saw the dad saying who who said to you that uh, uh, Khadija was Nasara hmm. if we go in the hadith we will find the following when your prophet he tried to commit suicide because obviously he's mentally ill and this is Sahih al-Bukhari and you can't tell me you don't agree with it otherwise people will laugh at you and Muslims will attack you you will see here when Muhammad he saw supposedly a man and the man he squeezed him three times Muhammad he went back to Khadija Allah messenger returned with his inspiration with his inspiration I mean have you ever heard of misleading translation for what happened how that can be inspiration if he was a person who just heard a man talking to him that is not inspiration inspiration you inspire in your mind a vision is called a vision in your mind it's called inspiration a man giving you a letter this is delivery that is not inspiration so when Muhammad he went there and he told Khadija Khadija she took him to where after Muhammad he saw a sign of uh, being mentally ill he's shaking he is breaking he is terrified he is in fear you know the Muslim they say to you the difference between seeing an angel and seeing an, a shaitan if you see an angel you will be calm happy comfortable well your prophet he was terrified to the point even when Muhammad he received a Quran as some of the verses saying he was going out to do his to the bathroom and each time he hear the message the, the angel saying to him oh Muhammad Muhammad he ran away and we made a video about it many times but if you go down here you will see Khadija she took Muhammad to her priest who is this priest oh our browser collapse again give me a second Yeah, it's still not working, but eh, we'll do the job. Eh, it's doing it, doing the same again. Um, anyway, so she took him to who? She took him to uh, the priest, Warakhab Nofal. The Muslim, they will say to you, this is the cousin of the cousin of the cousin of her uncle. It doesn't matter. He is the priest. She took him for a reason, for he is a Christian priest. Nasara, not Christian, sorry. So Khadija was a Hindu. But she took Muhammad to the priest. What is the religion of Khadija? If I take you, if you come to me 
and you say you have a problem and then I take you to a priest isn't it obvious that I am a person who belong to this belief otherwise why she took him to a priest how she knew even that he should go there was she inspired by Allah was she so when the Muslim they say things they sound funny and dummy she took him to the priest who his name is Waraq ibn Nufal and he was translating as you see here who during the pre-Islamic period become a Nasara not a Christian and he used to write Arabic writing and he used to write of the gospel in Arabic that is the Quran was Muhammad promising Khadija to go to hell or to go to heaven the verse saying here Khadija she was a promise to go to heaven she is Nasara not only Khadija all the Christians not only the Christian or the Jews not only the Jews the Sabian if you go and search who is the Sabian you will see how silly Muhammad is how in the world you promise the Sabian the Muslim they will say to you there's two kind of Sabian it doesn't matter what kind there's no two kind of Sabian that's a lie secondly both of them they are not considered as people of the book so how they became people of heaven actually the Sabian they believe that the God of the Jews Adonai he is the devil and the reason they hate him because the Sabian believed that the Pharaoh was Sabian. And the God of Moses, Moshe, Adonai, he did destroy Pharaoh. This is why the Sabian, they consider the Jews are an enemy. And in their books, they make fun of them. They say their God, Adonai, he ordered them to do circumcision. And you Muslim, you follow the practice of the Jews and do circumcision. So according to Sabians, Muslims and Jews, and Christians for sure, they worship Satan. So how, how Sabian they will join us in heaven? For sure you have no answer because you are no one and your prophet is just a hypocrite man trying to collect as many followers as he can. Like, follow me, follow me, doesn't matter who you are, all of you will be saved, just be no, just accept me as a prophet, you, you are good. So from your words, I prove you wrong. The Quran is a book of contradiction. Your God even don't remember which one he created first. The stars or the trees? The mountains or the stars? So, you said very simple logic, common sense logic. In which common sense logic the Quran says something, in different verse he says something else. As an example, in which common sense logic, you Muslims, you say, the Quran says you can't do muta. And then you say the Quran forbid muta. And we cannot find the verse in the Quran says forbid muta. You will say to me, oh, it's in the hadith. So which common sense that God say, a man say, you take what man say against what God say. And in which common sense that you make a law and you change it, after you found out that you are wrong, contradicting yourself? The Arab, they found an answer for this. If you go to chapter 2, verse 106, you will find that the Arab, they say it in Tafsir al this is not me, this is not my translation, this is not the Sama Delta translation, so don't play the game. You will find here that when the Arab, they notice that Muhammad is mentally ill, this guy, he is not stable. So look what they said. When the disbeliever began to make fun of Muhammad in the matter of abrogation. Abrogation, what is that? The Muslim, they say abrogation, it happened everywhere. What abrogation happened everywhere? Hold on. Muhammad abrogating like what? The law of Moses? The law of Jesus? Or the law of Muhammad? The answer is the law of Muhammad. I mean, have you ever heard a guy? Read carefully what it says. He began, they began to make fun of him in the matter of obligation, saying that one day Muhammad enjoins his companions in one thing, and the next day he forbid it. <laughs> so when you question how that can be, that in one place it says this, and in one place it says that, you are questioning who? Are you questioning the stupidity of the Quran? 
or question Osama Dakdok. Isn't it stupid that you give an order today from Allah and second morning you change your order? An order about what? About practice of religion. And how you do it? You, you know, you change the Quran. I never heard of somebody he do such a thing unless he is mentally ill. And now, just to show you, we will go what the way what's saying, you know. If you read those verses, by the way, you will you will see this is hilarious. Allah will delete verses, abrogate verses, and he will cause the Muslim to forget the Quran. <laughs> <laughs> he will do what? He will cause you to forget it. Just forget it. What I said to you yesterday, just forget it. It was a stupid. Okay, just forget it. Okay, and I will bring something better or similar. So it's common sense, mister. It's common sense that there's God. He says something. And in the second morning, he says something else. And then he changed his mind. And he said to you, forget it. I will make something better. So look like this God, when he sent his message to you, he was drunk or under heroin. Tell me more. <clears throat> common sense. I love it when a Muslim speak about common sense. People who believe in hundreds of versions and sex and, you know, etc. endless private part, they talk about common sense. Go ahead, mister. I have of Quranic Arabic tells me that his translation is way off. Now, before I even get into the Arabic grammar of my argument, let me just say that even common sense will take us where we need to get to. How is it possible, just using common sense, how is it possible that the Quran, a book which criticizes Christians for worshiping Jesus, how can that same book be then telling you elsewhere that the Christians are supposed to be worshiping God and Jesus? The same book says that don't the Christians think and ponder and reflect? Don't they see that Jesus and Mary were human beings, that they had to eat? Don't they see that they had to eat, that they needed sustenance? That's another uh, uh, stupid thing to say that Jesus should not be worshipped because Jesus and his mother, what his mother have to do with this? Why you are mentioning his mother? The answer is very simple. Because the one who made the Quran is a fabricator. He claimed that the Christians worship Jesus and Mary. He claimed that the Trinity is Allah and Jesus and Mary. And near, I want to ask you, does it make common sense to you that in order to prove that Jesus is not God, you say him and his mother, they eat food? No, it doesn't. He inserted the name of the mother because the Quran make it clear. that Mary is part of the Trinity. And if we ask you now, what the Christians believe in the Trinity? What is the Trinity? You will say to me, well, the Trinity is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So where is Mary? Where is Mary in the Trinity? Where Muhammad? He got this from. As long as you are talking about common sense. And why Muhammad, he never mentioned any kind of a trinity except this trinity. There's only one trinity in Islam. Jesus, Mary, and Allah. And we don't worship Allah anyway. The Muslim, they would say to you, Arab Christian, they use the word Allah. And this is after the, 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 the Muslims forcing them to do so. Otherwise, in the, you know, if we read the Old Testament and the New Testament, in the original language, we will not find the word Allah exists at all. And you mention that Jesus, because he eat food, and his mother, because they eat food, they cannot be God. So you are saying to me, if God, he eat food, he cannot be God no more. He stripped from his ability to be God. Guys, the logic is about what? 
is about surviving or it's about being God. If it's about surviving, well, Jesus is alive for 2,000 years. Is he eating food now? According to you Muslims. If this is common sense, that a person who eats food, he cannot be God, and his mother, she cannot be God too, because we don't believe in his mother as God anyway. And the reason they cannot be God, because they eat food. Well, is it... Does it make sense that the person who eats food, he stay alive for 2,000 years? Does it make sense that the person who eats food, he can quake the dead, the dead from his grave? Does it make sense that the one who eats food, like me and you, he can't tell you what you hide in your houses? And actually you are the one who is quoting the verses for us. Thank you very much. Is that in your screen? So your God, he don't even know what the Trinity is. He do not know what the Christians are believing. And your God have a very f funny logic. Jesus and Mary, they eat food. So Jesus and Mary cannot be God. We don't believe as Mary as God. Forget about that. This is a lie of Islam. Secondly, if Jesus eat food, that cannot make him God. Well, I will go and use the same measurement to question who is Allah. Allah, he don't eat food. Allah, he don't eat food, but he cannot do what Jesus can do. Prove me wrong. As an example, the Quran says that Jesus, the Messiah, he quit the death, the dead from the grave. The Quran says by permission of Allah, prove it. Why the permission of Allah was not given to Muhammad? The Quran says, that Allah refrain from giving Muhammad miracles. The Quran says that Jesus the Messiah is the Word of God. Since when the Word of God is going to eat food? In your cult, not in my belief. In my belief, God, he can do everything. If God cannot eat food and that will change him from God to something else, that means he cannot be God, he's almighty. What you are saying to us, your God saying to us, that if some food go inside the flesh of Jesus, that's it, Jesus, he lost his power to be God. If you are saying to me that Jesus, he cannot be God because he needs food, that is again a stupid thing to say. Even the Bible says that Jesus was fasting for 40 days, fasting totally. Can you fast for 40 days? And if you are saying that this is because he eat food, that means he is full of human. We Christians believe that Jesus, he came in the flesh of a human. Isn't it Jibreel he ate with your prophet? If Jibreel he ate with your prophet and he is the Holy Spirit, that means Jibreel is not Jibreel no more. Did your Jibreel come to Mary, according to Islam, as a full man? Does that mean that he lost his title and his ability? He is not Jibreel no more. What he become? He becomes just a man now. Because he ate. Because he's a man. He appeared to her. And by the way, nowhere in the Quran it says that this is Jibreel. This is the Muslim fiction trying to explain. You see, this is why they put between two brackets, Angel Jibreel, or Gabriel. Even the name is wrong in the Quran. What Jibreel? The verse saying, we sent to her our Ruh. Ruh is a spirit. Angels are not spirit. And the Quran confirmed that. Where the Quran says, the day where the angels and the spirit, they will stand in ranks. If the angels and the spirit are one, then we are adding the word and wrongly. And that means the Quran have a grammar mistakes and a stupid Arabic. I'm supposedly planning to make this video like 15 minutes. Yeah, right. This is your translation, not Osama Dagdok, so don't cry. 
the day that the spirit and the angels will stand forth if the spirit is the same as the angels did Allah he made a mistake in Arabic again and he said al malaika wal ruh or al ruh wal malaika are you adding and here by mistake is that a grammar mistake? Is that I want you to tell me where is the fatha now, huh, Mr. Fatha? يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة صفن the spirit and the angels. And here you will notice that the angels are not singular name, while the ruh is singular name. It's one. So that is the Holy Spirit. And your God, he took the Holy Spirit word from the Bible. Otherwise, how angel can be even holy? If this is an angel, when Allah, he ordered him to bow down to Adam as a punishment for lying about the future of Adam. <clears throat> so listen carefully. When a Muslim, he says something, he say it in order to defend but the second he start defending, he beat up his God. That if God didn't sustain them, they wouldn't <clears throat> exist. The same book says that Jesus is no more than a messenger. He's a messenger of God. He's not God himself. He's not God incarnate. Okay, hold on. Where it says he is no more than a messenger. I want to read it. Is that chapter 4 verse 171? No more than a messenger. Just to show you that those people, they themselves, they are accusing somebody that he misled in the translation, but they are the one who is deceiving in translation. I challenge this gentleman friendly to show me where in chapter 4, verse 171, it says, he is no more than a messenger. Is that in the translation or in Arabic? He will say it is in the translation. So how come the translation does not match the Arabic? How come you did not make a video about it? How come you don't complain? Oh, because this is fit with our propaganda and our agenda. So we don't have to be decent as Muslim when we translate, but you Christian, you cannot do the same because you are claiming that he is fabricating translation, don't you? Even though he did not, Osama, he did not. He wrote what is there, and I will prove it to you in the screen in front of everybody. He is no more than a messenger. Read with me carefully and see how they lie. Do you see the word no more between two brackets? And this is your Muslim translation. That means it's not there. No more than a messenger where you get this from if you say to me this is from our understanding that's mean you are fabricating you just said the Quran say not the tafsir and there's a huge difference between saying interpretation saying that translation saying that and the Quran saying that so no more than a messenger is not exist. That's number one lie. So he was a messenger of Allah. Okay. He's a messenger of Allah. Jesus in the Bible, he says, the father sent me. Correct Christians? The Bible of the Christians, and we can show you tons of verses, saying the father sent me. Okay. But still that will not change anything. Let's see. The same verse he is quoting proving to us that Jesus is God because he is a messenger of God and then he is his word. If you ask the Muslims, is the word of God holy? They will say yes. Is the word of God eternal? They will say yes. Do the word of God eat? They will say no. <laughs> so how he is the word of God yet he can eat? The Muslim, they will say to you, oh, 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 hold on. Allah, he said to him, be, and he was. That is a scam. Because Allah did not create Jesus according to Quran by saying, be. 
he sent his word down to Mary, as you see in the verse, and then he blew from his spirit on Mary, private part between two bracket, filthy language. And then Jesus is there supposedly as a man, as a flesh. Before that point, Jesus was the word of God, which means he exists as a word. He is exist as a spirit. And this spirit is a proceeding from him. So look this verse, how stupid it is. This verse is the same one says, say no trinity, is the same verse saying, you can be three and one in the same time. How? Jesus is a man, a messenger. He is a word. And he is a spirit. This is not the trinity we believe in, but this is a trinity in the verse. How the trinity, how this, how the spirit is eating food. The same as Jabril, who became as became a man, yet he is the Holy Spirit according to you. So, the logic of Muslims is not only broken; it's crocked, it's false, it's fiction. It's a logic of an angry person who do not know what to say, and the more he talk, he break it. They make it more stupid. And you will notice here that the verse saying that this is a word of God sent down on Mary. So where was Jesus before he went down? He was in heaven. Well, isn't it? This is in total agreement with the book of John chapter 1 and verse number 1 and verse number 14. In the beginning, it was the word. That is Jesus. Verse number 14, and the word became a flesh. That is Jesus. So here we go. Muhammad here is copying the Bible. Yet he is denying the Trinity, saying Jesus is the word of God who sent down and became a flesh through Mary. Yet he is a spirit of God. And you will notice here the translator, he said the proceeding. I hope you will not be angry from uh, Yusuf uh, Ali. Maybe Yusuf Ali, he worked for Osama Daktok. I think he do work for him once I saw him washing his car. Proceeding from him. That's mean the spirit of the Messiah is not a created spirit. It's spirit of God. Do you see the ing? I know you will say this guy translation is a stupid. Eh, almost in translation is a stupid for you. Can you give us the translation you accept? You will not. You will say I accept only the Quran. In Arabic, I say to you, well, the Quran in Arabic, is it satisfying you? You don't speak Arabic. <laughs> And as long as you don't speak Arabic, you cannot read the Quran. Actually, Muhammad, he made it clear that one Quran is not enough. If you remember, there's a person, his name, Yasser Qadi. He is supposedly a scholar for the Muslims, but all of them, they are cartoon scholars. Muhammad, he said that he asked Allah to send him the Quran in seven ways. Seven. And Muhammad, he made it clear, my people are not capable of doing it. Doing what? One Quran. Is that why the verses in the Quran are very confusing? If you want to tell me that the Quran is enough and it's capable to explain itself by one Quran, you are accusing your prophet to be a liar. So you are quoting for us a Quran or many Quran. Which Quran you are trying to prove to us to be right? And if one Quran cannot be capable, I mean, how big the failure of Allah that he wrote a book and this book cannot be clear if it's one time written. It have to be seven time. And who is the one saying that Allah, he failed to make his Quran clear? Muhammad himself. What you will say? You will say this is the Eve Hadith. This is Sahih Hadith. I know the trick. Daif Hadith. Weak Hadith. All of you are weak. Everything in Islam is weak. Have you ever heard of a silly argument of a Quran make things clear? He just said that to us. 
The Quran made things so clear in many places, but the Quran cannot be clear according to Muhammad. My people are not capable of doing it. Then he came for the second time and he said, Allah command you, you should recite the Quran to your people in two dialect. Upon this, the Holy Prophet, Holy Prophet, he became holy now. He's a holy. Is it the Quran say he's a sinner? Isn't it? And his sin is breaking his back. <laughs> the holy sinner man. Have you ever heard of a madness like this? Muhammad is the holy sinner man. I don't like to say things without proving it. You know them. We show it. Still they cry. And they will say, it doesn't say that, CP. Huh? It doesn't say that, CP. Yeah. Nothing say that at all, you know. As long as long a Christian person is the one is saying that, it doesn't say that, CP. Do you see it? In different verse, this is chapter 94, verse number 3 and 2, it says clearly that Muhammad is a big time sinner. And even Allah says to him, pray and ask to forgive your sin and their sin. And then Allah in different verse, he says to him, May Allah forgive your sin, the future and the coming one, the, the, the past one. Have you ever heard of a prophet? Has God given an open license for sin? One of the lies, the Muslim, they come and they say to us that the Christian, they used to give a document, they attack the Catholic Church. And they say the Pope, he give you a paper, says your sin is forgiven, you go to heaven. That is not true. That's a lie. And this is, exists in the Quran, not in the Pope. And by the way, we don't follow the Pope anyway, regardless if we are Catholic or not. That Allah may forgive thee the fault. Translation, is the word fault here is accurate? Absolutely not. They will not make a fuss about it and they will not complain and they will not make a revolution. Allahu Akbar is lying. Change the translator. This is who? Yusuf Ali. And you will notice right away, in a miraculous way, the word fault becomes sin. There's a huge difference between fault and sin. Fault is something you do, but you don't have intention to do it. It's a mistake. Like you said to me, give me the uh, 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 the chair, I give you the, 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 uh, uh, the table. I heard you wrong. But this is sin. That Allah may forgive your sin in the past and the future to come. But they call him Holy Prophet. Did you see any Muslim complain about calling Muhammad holy? Since, man, since when man is holy? I thought only God is holy. And then... They, they are mushrikeen, the Muslims are mushrikeen, they are kuffar. They even call Jibreel holy, because they say that the Holy Spirit is Jibreel. By making Jibreel holy, you make him God. By making Muhammad holy, you make him God. It's a messed up cult. So as you see here, the Quran, it has to be given to you in seven ways in order to be capable of being a Muslim. Otherwise, one Quran is not exist. Where we can find the Quran of Muhammad? We cannot. This video became so long, I apologize. <laughs> but I, I wanted to do light spanking, but it's getting harder now. So this guy is upset. And then let us go, move forward. Otherwise, this will stay for 10 hours. He's not God in the flesh or part of a triune God. He is no more than a messenger of God, a mm. prophet of God. Elsewhere in the Quran, God rhetorically asks the question of Jesus, did you tell your followers to worship you and your mother as two gods besides? That's a good question. Did you, Jesus, say, worship me and my mother? 
Okay, where, where is the Christian say it worship Jesus and his mother? Can you show me the name of the book? Can you? Name the book. What a stupid religion. Continue. Anyway, let's go to the verse because all of this is just uh, talking about common sense. This will take forever. Let us go to the verse itself where he explained to you how Brother Osama did mislead you. Listen carefully. Science. As it takadu ahbarahum wa ruhbanahum arbaba min dunillah wal masih abna Maryam. So it means they took ahbar priests, ahbarahum, their priests. Waruhban and monks, waruhbanahum and their monks. Arbaban means as lords, minduna, which means besides or rather than Allah, God. Wa and Al Masih ibn Maryam, the Messiah, the son of Mary, and it continues on. So they took their priests and monks as lords besides God and the Messiah. Now here's the thing, look at the word priests. It has this uh, vowel mark on top of it, which is called a fatha, which is basically a mark uh, on top of the object of the verb took. So ahbara, uh, that vowel mark on the top means that priests is the object of they took. They took what? They took their priests. And you see that above the monks, waruhban. Uh, also has that vowel mark uh, above, which means they took their priests and their monks as lords, min dunillahi, rather than Allah, rather than God. And when it comes to the word God, you can see that the vowel marking is below the word. That's called a kasra. There's a reason for that. So it's not the same as the two previous words, priests and monks but it is uh, in the genitive case, and that mark is called a kasra. Then when it comes to wal Masiha and the Messiah, you can see that that vowel mark is at the top again, indicating that the Messiah is the object of the verb took. So they took their priests, and they took their monks, and they took the Messiah as lords besides God. Now let me make that even clearer to you in just the English. They took, took we know is a verb. They took what? They took their priests. So we have this uh, vowel mark, which indicates that it is the direct object of the verb took. They took their priests and monks. So monks also has this same vowel mark, which is called a fatha, again indicating that monks is also a direct object of the verb took. They took their priests and monks as lords besides Allah. Now Allah doesn't have that fatha mark on top, it has a kasra mark below, which indicates that it is in the genitive case uh, due to the preposition besides. And the Messiah, Messiah again has that uh, fatha vowel mark on top of it which indicates that it too is the direct object of the verb took. So they took what? They took their priests and they took their monks and they took the Messiah and they took Jesus as lords besides Allah. They weren't supposed to do that. They weren't supposed to worship the priests or the monks or the rabbis or the Messiah. I think even if you're an American Christian and you don't know a single word of Arabic, you can just re-watch the video that I just made. Just re-watch. Okay, I will just do your advice because you just got yourself busted. First of all, the Quran never have those Vav in the top or in the bottom. This is some pictures of Quran, which was without those things. Actually, even this one have some. Let us see. So where do you get those from? Those are new. So you are telling me, in order to fix it, we add those things to make it look better? Are you saying to me that this Quran is so confusing and then a guy who came long after Muhammad, he add those dots, even the dots are not there, not only the Kasra and the Fatha, to make it 
clear. That is missed a book. Now let us show you what he did. If we go back a little bit in the video, you will see he just, this is his translation, not my translation. He is the one, and I'm very thankful for you helping us. You are the one who lined up the words together. Is that your translation? Guys, is that his video? Is that he, what he put in the screen? Read it. Just read it. They took their priest and monks. There's two or the one they took. You see, Arabic is so easy, especially if you speak Arabic, to understand. I mean, they took who? They took this and this. And is the same as in English when we say and that's mean who is who is who is with them? Are they alone? They took only the priest? No. They took their priest and the monks. Okay. As what? As Lord. The story is over. Now there's a new information. Beside who? <laughs> Beside Allah and the Messiah. <laughs> This is your translation. And now you are saying to me, we Muslims, we have to be smart. There is a fatha here. Okay, there's a fatha. And you know, because there's a fatha here, and there's a fatha here, that means this is the object. But the Quran is not written with the fatha, not with the kasra. And secondly, who is the one who says to you that will make it the object? If you are speaking about Arabic grammar, as we showed you from the beginning of the video, the Quran is full of Arabic mistakes and grammar mistakes. And even though you Muslims, you try to bend the grammar to make it, actually, even the Muslims, they say, the grammar is coming from the Quran, go and ask them, which means they fabricate a grammar to fit with the Quran because the Quran is wrong. And if the grammar, you know, I remember once in the school, I wrote the word in Arabic wrong. The teacher who hate me very much, he started calling me names. He starts saying to me, a donkey will not write it this way. A stupid will not write it this way. What's wrong with you? And he was humiliating me with all kinds of names. And I was smiling. And he said, look, look, look. He don't even feel the humiliation. This is how stupid he is. He is smiling. And then I said, well, sir, uh, I'm smiling because this is how it's written in the Quran. <laughs> And the second I said to him, this is how it's written in the Quran, the guy, he started shaking. And he's saying, no, 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 actually, he's right. He's right. This is the correct way to write it. This is absolutely the correct way to write it. Yes, the, the, and then the, 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 the bell of the school rang and people have to go out. He closed the door. He was afraid that the children, they will go now to home and they will tell their parents that the guy, he wrote the word as it is in the Quran and he told him only donkeys write it this way. So he want to fix it before he get maybe killed. Mostly. This is your translation. Is the Quran a clear, clear, clear book? So you are saying to me that in order to understand the Quran, I have to learn about the Fatha and the Kasra, which is, came long after Muhammad, and that will explain to me why the meaning is messed up. And if we go right now and use, actually, I wanted to use this website, but you help me. I mean, I do not need it anymore. This is your translation, isn't it? If we if we pick up the translation, the Muslim they choose. Give me a second. Just to show you how messed up this cult is. <clears throat> Oh. 
it is C. Let us choose a translation. Choose translation. All right. I will show you only Islamic translation, not my translation. And you will see immediately how the Muslims are truly, truly confused. The Quran is a messed up book. Actually, you know what? I'm going to highlight all the translation you Muslims have in your website. All of them. We will show no exception. I'm just highlighting. You see, I'm, I'm checking the points here. So we can show you all of them. All right. So this is the verse. If we move our mouse over the words, the Muslim website, and we are thankful for help, their help, they put the translation for every word one by one. اتخذوا, they have taken أحبارهم, their rabbis, ورهبانهم, and their monks, أرباب, as lords. Min, beside, دون, Allah. This is a translation. I'm not translating anything. I'm just showing you on the screen what is there. So don't say I'm translating. Min دون, Allah, beside Allah, wal Masih. And the Messiah. <laughs> I mean, how clear it is more than this. They took their monks and rabbi as God instead of Allah and the Messiah. So I know you are saying to me, oh, because we, we added the Fatha there, that will make it go back all the way. In which language is that? And in which translation is that? Is that your translation? And if the Fatha it should suppose to, to change the thing. Why in your translation it says, and the Messiah? In order to be, this verse is correct, it have to be, they took their priest and their monks and, their, and the Messiah as lords. Why you are adding the Messiah at the end? That is a mistake in the Quran. Now, if you say to me, and you said that already, that the Quran says that Jesus is not God, well, the Hadith says Jesus is God. And if you are saying to me, there's no way Allah, he will say Jesus is God, well, your prophet, he did. Is that your prophet talking about Jesus? Or he's talking about the false Jesus. <laughs> Read carefully, people. He cannot say this is a weak hadith. He cannot say those are weak. You know, the game of weak and, you know, they cannot play it. You see, it's sahih. All of this is sahih. Look what Muhammad, he said about the false Messiah who is just a perfect man. He have a perfect flesh as a man, which means you look as a man, he's a human being. The Muslim, they call him a Dajjal. Why they call him a Dajjal? They call him a Masih al-Dajjal, which means the, 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 uh, Christ the liar, which means this is a false Christ. Is, this is a person he will claim to be his Christ, but he's not. Between two bracket Antichrist, and here you see how funny it is to say that there is a, a, a Satan, he is Antichrist, that he should be anti-Allah, but how Allah can be against himself. Then Muhammad, he said, not me. The Prophet said, I have told you so much about the Dajjal, the Antichrist, that I am afraid you may not understand that the Antichrist is short and him too, really haired and one eye, an eye sightless and neither pro uh, protruding and nor deep seated. If you are confused about him, know that your Lord is not one eyed. What is the confusion now? The confusion between the false Messiah. And the real Messiah or between the false Messiah and Allah? You tell me. The person he is saying, I am the Messiah. That's why they call him Al-Masih al-Dajjal. So why Muhammad is afraid that the Messiah, the false Messiah, the Muslim, they will think he is Allah? <laughs> Unless the second you claim to be the false Messiah or you claim to be the Messiah, you are claiming to be God. 
And this is exactly what we see here. Your prophet is a flip-flap like Joe Biden. Once he is racist, second day he is not. Once he was saying the Christian will go to heaven, but when the Christian did not listen to him, did not believe in him, he says, I will kill you all. This is why you see that this verse, not only confusing to you, is confusing to every Muslim. And the only way to understand it is to go and read the interpretation. And I challenge you to accept interpretation. I challenge the Muslim to say there's an interpretation book we accept, which is not written by somebody, you know, he's born just last year, by the scholars, the, the traditional scholars, which is very well known, the big ones. Not Potato Tomato wrote a book 2010. If your God Allah is not a man, and if your God Allah is not the Messiah, why Muhammad is afraid that when the false Messiah come, you Muslims, you are going to confuse and think he is Allah. And the only difference between the false Messiah, which is a man, and Allah is one eye. Or this is the difference between Allah, sorry, the difference between the false Messiah and the real Messiah. Look what Muhammad, he said. He said, know that your Lord is not one eyed. In order for the story to be correct here, the Lord have to be Christ. No one else. Because the false Messiah claiming to be the Messiah. He's not claiming to be Allah. But obviously by claiming to be the Messiah, you're claiming to be God. So Muhammad is saying to them, hold on. There's only one way for you to recognize the true God, the Messiah. The false Messiah have one eyed. The true Messiah, your Lord, have two eyes. And they are perfectly fine. If you say to me, no, this is about Allah, that means Allah is a man. And the only difference between him and the false messiah, the Dajjal, is the eye. Either way, you are doomed. So when a Muslim, he speak about common sense, makes sense, does, it, does the story make sense? If I say to you, be aware of a false messiah, then I should compare him with the real messiah, not with Allah or your Lord. Unless the Messiah is the Lord. So here you see the Muslim is struggling. Struggling to explain a stupid book. To make it, maybe we can make it make sense. But as you see, he is the one who lined the word for us next to each other. He is the one who add the word and here. He is the one who said, beside Allah and the Messiah. And he, then he come to us, he says, oh, there's a fatha. Oh, I'm going to add a fatha now. I'm going to change it. I will make a new print. I will make a kasra. Which will be funny if you say al-Masihi. <laughs> you know, one of the funny, maybe I should make a special videos about how the Quran can be very funny and very silly. Because Allah, he chose a wrong language, not because the Arabic language is bad, but the Arabic language in the time of Muhammad was not really ready. Uh, I mean, it's very deceiving because adding one dot can change everything. Just one dot. Very deceiving uh, uh, book because the language is not perfect yet. And Arabic is very, you know, uh, a complicated language. And I will give you an example, even though uh, not the time for it, but just for education, because you know this is this is a topic. I don't uh, talk about it because you need to speak Arabic. And then the Muslim they will say he is not saying the truth. This is not what Arabic says. You know the game, right? If you go in the Quran, you will see Allah saying. 
Allah is saying, supposedly, not Muhammad. Muhammad is not the one who made the Quran. Come on. In two chapters in the Quran, chapter 55, verse 56, chapter 55, verse 74. Read the stupid translation. And by the way, I will accept it. <laughs> because this is what they understand. This is what they believe. No problem. But if we go in the language, we will find that the word yatmuthahunna is a stupid. Because the word tomth means women, period. I can take you right now to the dictionary. The word tomth means women, period. Since when women, they get their period when you have sex with them. So the Quran because it's written by an idiot, he want to say that women, they bleed, they are losing their virginity, so he used the wrong word. You cannot use the word Thomas. After Muhammad, he used that word, the Muslim now they say, uh, okay, this is accepted, but this is not accepted in Arabic. Imagine you say, I slept with a virgin, so she have her period. Uh, which means the intercourse caused the period. Instead, it should be that a virgin, she lose her virginity, she bleed. And actually, even the translator, he waits for you between two brackets. As you see. But this is a wrong language. You cannot use it this way. But all, or all always the Muslim, in order to explain something in the Quran, they have to add 20 words inside the verse to explain the stupidity of the Quran. And if we go back to the chapter we were reading from, this is the Muslim translations. Each one of them is different. Same verse. They have taken the rabbis and the monks as well as the Messiah. Look, he, this guy, he moved the Messiah all the way to the front. In the translation of the Abdul in the video, the Messiah is not there. It's at the end. <laughs> in the translation of this Abdul, Dr. Mustafa, the Messiah is moved from the end of the verse, became here to fix it. How come you do not complain? Different translation. Fadl Suleiman. They have taken their rabbis and their monks as Lord, apart from Allah, as well as the Messiah. <laughs> as well? In your translation, it's end. Which one of you is lying? Musarrif al-Qur'an, different translation. They have taken their rabbis and their monks as God beside Allah, and also, in the Qur'an it says, and also? And look, he did not put the word also between the bracket. No, he, he put it out, uh, out. But in your translation, there is no also. <laughs> and also, and then he put bracket. And also they have taken the Messiah, son of Maryam, as God. Between two bracket, why every translation is different? Every single translation of those are different. They have taken this is big tal. They have taken as they have taken as Lord beside Allah their rabbis and their monks, and the Messiah, son of Mary. Hmm? This guy. He moved the word Rabbi after the word Allah. <laughs> but in your translation, it's not. <laughs> I can move the word Rabbi 
and put it after Allah in the translation? Is that okay? <laughs> Excuse me. I will die one day, just wait. Having heart attack, laughing at this cult. I will be happy to die this way. Uh, they have taken their Lord. They have taken their Lord. This is Bekta, we read Bekta already. They have adopted their scholar and monks as Lord instead of Allah, between two brackets, God plus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best comedy ever this is the same website I mean do you see how much the Muslims are struggling to fix it they take this is a different one this one Muhammad Hijab oh this is Muhammad Hijab is that the same Mimi I hope not <laughs> They take their rabbis and their monks for their Lord apart from Allah and also the Messiah. Also the Messiah. <laughs> this is the most hilarious religion ever. They cannot. They cannot. Explain to us why the Quran. Okay, you know what? The Quran says that we made the Quran so clear. I mean, do you see how clear the Quran? Do you see how clear the Quran? Which translation for you is the clear one? And by the way, if you ask the Muslims, okay, is this verse accurate when you say? That the Christians and the Jews they worship their monks they took them as God we don't they will say oh no don't you obey your monk so hold on so if you Muslims you obey the teaching of Ibn Taymiyyah that make him God you go to Muslim website asking for a fatwa and this is your scholar he gave you and your prophet he ordered you to obey those scholars that make them God but in order to cover the stupidity of the verse here because it doesn't make sense no Christian no Jews worship their rabbi they don't they come with the answer saying oh okay you don't worship them but isn't it obeying them an act of worship that is the most false argument ever because you Muslims you obey your scholar and if I if you say to me, I ask a priest and he said to me, this is what the Bible says. Well, I'm not obeying him. I'm obeying what the Bible says. Even let's say he, for the sake of argument, he gave me wrong uh, interpretation for the Bible. I am obeying the Bible. And you Muslims, you obey your scholars. And you obey your prophet. If obeying the prophet is act of worship, that's mean Allah and Muhammad is God. In fact, the Quran, he make it clear that you as a Muslim, you have to obey Allah and obey Muhammad. And actually, if you obey Muhammad, you are obeying Allah. Which means Allah is Muhammad. In chapter 4, verse number 80, it says the following. He who obey the messenger, again between two brackets, S-A-W, they cannot even say his name without, in, without adding titles and decoration. Muhammad, Muhammad in Islamic books is like, a, is like a Christmas tree. They have to put tons of lies next to his name each time they say his name. They, they are terrified to say his name as a man. He's a man or God? He's a God. Not a man. He who obey the messenger has indeed obeyed Allah.
So if obeying the monks will make the monks lords, obeying Muhammad will make Muhammad lord. Do you see how their logic is very cropped, broken, stupid? And then in the video he said something about Egyptian. He said that Osama Daktok, yes, he speaks Arabic, but he is Egyptian. And Egyptian language today is not the same as before. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, I think you, you did thought about it for long. That part, and you can see that <laughs> due to the vowel markings in the original Arabic, it's absolutely clear, clear that the Quran is saying that the Jews and Christians, the Christians specifically rather, they made a mistake by taking their rabbis and their priests and Jesus. Hold on, hold on. The Christians specifically? Are you corrupting the Quran again? Did this guy, he just said the Christians specifically? Let me go back in your translation. I mean, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> the Christian specifically? I thought this is your translation. Their monks and their rabbi. And that will make it the Christian specifically. Well, don't you Muslims know that the first people who believe in Jesus, they were the Jews? And they are Jews? And don't you know Muslim knows that the word Rabbi goes for the Jews? And don't you Muslim knows that the interpretation explained? So how come now became Christian specifically? Is it so clear this is the Christians? Is it the, the Jews, they worship the Son of God too? According to the Quran, yeah, let's continue. This video will take forever. I said to myself, 15 minutes, you're right. Continue. Absolutely clear that the Quran <laughs> is saying that the Jews and Christians, the Christians specifically, rather. So, 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 look, 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 look. The Quran clear says the Jews and the Christians. And then he swallowed it. He says the Jews and the Christians specifically. <laughs> <laughs> a second ago it was the Jews and the Christians now it's only the Christians okay it's clear rather they made a mistake by taking their rabbis they make a mistake it was a mistake oh okay and their priests and Jesus as lords or as authorities above and beyond the authority and sovereignty and supremacy of God Almighty. Now, there's only two possibilities for why Usama Dakdok did this. Either he doesn't have proper knowledge of Arabic, because despite being a native Arabic speaker, if he is one, if he really is from Egypt, colloquial Egyptian Arabic today is quite different in a number of respects from the standard classical Arabic of the Quran. When you're reading an Egyptian newspaper today, you're not dealing with these vowel markings, and so you don't have to deal with all of this. Uh, so when we read the Quran in the time before a prophet, there's vows there. <laughs> All of you, you can go right now and search when the dots and the vows they were added to the Arabic language, and you will see how silly this person is. Very silly argument. But it is entertaining, to be honest with you. <clears throat> you know, uh, if you are a person who speaks Arabic and you read the Quran, you will notice, I mean, the Quran is really, really weird book. The Arabic is wrong. The science is wrong. The history is wrong. Like as an example, uh, if you go in the Quran, Look at this.
<laughs> in chapter 20 verse number 85 chapter 20 verse number 87 chapter 20 verse number 95 all of them talk about who read the translation brother read the translation it says a summary where is the translation translate translate you know that's the, the, the people who speak i mean sometimes muslim translation is really funny uh, let us see uh, uh, let us see yusuf ali okay the translation who is the one who mislead the people summary this is not translated too. I mean, what's wrong with those Muslims? Why they are using the word in Arabic? I mean, what kind of a, what kind of a translation you keep the word as it is? Is it translation or it's a? Maybe they consider it as a name. <laughs> this is why they are translating. Look at all of them. They are saying a summary, a summary. Let us see the front. Oh, hold on. Let us see this one. Maybe this one is smarter. Ah, the Samaritan. The Samaritan. The Samaritan was in the he he was the one who mislead the people of Moses. <laughs> it's so clear, brother. It's so clear. <laughs> Is that a mistake in Arabic? Is that a mistake in a grammar? Is that a mistake in history? Ah, uh, not to forget that Mary she is the sister of Aaron, and she is the daughter of Amran. Who is Amran? He is the father of Moses. <laughs> and as long as you are talking about correct translation, I have a question for you. Is the translation in chapter 19, verse number 19, is it correct? Because, you know, you Muslims are so confused about it. Like here we see that Jesus is so pure. The front translation says holy. The front translation say pure. So which translation is the one you accept? And why Jesus is a pure? Is Muhammad pure? If not, why? Yusuf Ali, he said, the holy son. Is that a fabricated translation? So you are saying to the Christian you should not worship the Holy Son? Son of who? Who is the father of Jesus? God? So he is the Holy Son of God? How in the Quran you say the Holy Son? How he is pure? Pure from what? From sin. But isn't it every baby pure? He might think about it. No. In Islam, there's no such a thing. Muhammad, even he said that babies, they will go to hell and they might go to heaven. When Aisha, she asked him about, I'm just trying to save him because he might try. I know what he will say. He'll say, babies are anyway, they are pure. You know, come on. Change your diet. When Aisha, she said, after a funeral, that this child he is a bird from the birds of paradise for he did not commit sin neither he reached the age of sin he did not do evil he never did evil he did not reach the age of evil muhammad he said oh aisha don't be a fool it might be the other way he might go to hell but jesus is holy actually even the quran said that the messiah said Salamun alayya yawma amutu, yawma walidtu, wa yawma amutu, wa yawma uba'athu hayya. Peace be upon me, the day I am born. The day I die. And the day I'm resurrected. Is that a false translation? Peace be upon me. The day I was born, the day, the day I die, and the day I shall be raised alive. Who is giving peace on me? 
Jesus talking. And why? If there is peace on Muhammad the day he is born, the day he die, the day he will be raised up? No. And who is the one giving the peace to Jesus? And who is the one who is called Jesus the Holy? And who is right now the one who is alive? So you Muslim, you want to try to convince us that Jesus is not God. By saying the Quran says all over, Jesus is not God. But Jesus is the one who can tell you what you hide in your places. Jesus can raise you from death. Jesus can make the blind see. Jesus can tell you about your sin. And this is what you, you, you Muslims quote for us and you scream. And yet Jesus is just a man. Isn't it the Quran who said? That Jesus, he can tell you even what you hide in your houses. How he can tell you what you hide in your houses. When they asked Muhammad the same question, he said, I know nothing. I do not know anything. Zero. <clears throat> Actually, I made a video just two days about it, two days ago. Yesterday, actually. I wasn't planning actually to go today. I was planning to go tomorrow, you know. Muhammad, he made it clear that he knew nothing of the unseen. And if he knew, he would take the best of it. Chapter 60, verse number 50. Sorry, chapter 6, verse number 50. Is that the wrong translation? Say, I tell you, not that with me are the treasure of Allah, nor I know what is hiding, nor I do tell you, I am an angel, but I follow what is revealed to me. Let us compare to Jesus, the one, the Muslim. He's trying to converse, convince us all over the Quran says Jesus is not God. Compare. Just look. Take a look. So this is Muhammad in chapter 6, verse number 50. Allah is saying to Muhammad, say this, you know nothing, you are just a, 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 you are just a recording machine, I tell you, and you say what I say. As simple as that. Let us see in the case of Jesus. <clears throat> Let us see in the case of Jesus. Jesus, he come to you with signs. And the Muslim, they say from your Lord, remember, eh, this is your statement. I design out of the clay as if it were a figure of a bird and I breathe into it. From the breath of Jesus, life coming. In the Quran, the Muslim, they say by permission from Allah, who care? He's just a creator now. Allah, he gave the attribute of a creation to Jesus, according to your verse. Jesus had the attribute of the creator in the Quran. While Muhammad crying in the Quran, in chapter 6, saying, I know nothing, don't ask me. I am just a recording machine. Jesus is not a recording machine. Jesus is not a talking machine. Jesus, he himself is the word of God. And he will become a bird, the what? The clay which I breathe into him. By the leave of Allah. So Allah gave the leave to Jesus about what creating to be creator. Hey, Jesus, I hire you to work as a creator with me. <laughs> and I heal him who has been born blind. Jesus can make you see. Muhammad is blind. As you see, Muhammad is blind. I see nothing. I know nothing. I'm blind. I know only what they told me. I'm blind. Jesus can make you see even if you are blind. As you see in the verse here. Even if you are born blind, I heal you. I heal the leper and I bring the dead to life. The Quran says, who, who can resurrect, bring people from death, save Allah? <laughs> well, Jesus, he have the permission. <laughs> All of this, remember, the Muslim, they will say to you, permission, it's a permission. It's a permission. My friend, I can say I gave the permission to Jesus. Prove me wrong. 
Anyone can claim that. But what we confirm now that Jesus, he do what God can do. And Muhammad, while, while Muhammad was crying, saying, I'm just a, a guy from Arabia. I know nothing, okay? Don't ask me questions. Chapter 5, verse 101. When they start asking him questions, he have no idea what to say to them. And the Muslim, they make all kinds of stories to, to solve the problem. He say, I, uh, don't ask questions, okay? Uh, you, you know, uh, ask like, oh, you believe, ask not questions about things which made it plain to you. I mean, if they cannot ask questions about things made it plain, they will ask you about what? About things is not plain? I mean, have you ever heard of a person, he will ask you a question about something, he know the answer for it? So ask not question about things made it plain for you. Because why? The verse after it says why? Some people before you did the same, asked the same questions, and they became loser of their faith. We go back to Jesus. Did Jesus says, ask me no questions? No, he says, and I inform you of what you eat and what you store in your houses. Jesus have all this knowledge. And the funny, the Muslim, they say when they speak about Muhammad, Muhammad, he asked his, uh, his companion, do you know where the sun set? Muhammad, he loved this point, you know. Do you know where the sun set? The guy, he says, as usual, uh, Allah and his prophet uh, knows best. Yeah. The are mushrikeen, the Muslims are kuffar. They claim that Allah and Muhammad, they have equal knowledge, both they know best. So Muhammad, what he said? He said, it, it's okay. Uh, do you know what the sun said? Okay, no, Prophet. Allah and his messenger knows best. Did Muhammad say, don't say that? Don't say knows best? Well, in the verse in the Quran, it says he knew nothing except what Allah told him. We just showed you the verse. Right? I know nothing except what Allah told me. So how he knew nothing except what Allah told him, and suddenly here now he knew where the sun set. Obviously, Allah told him. And Muhammad, he said, can the blind healed equal to this, the one who can see? Muhammad is a blind. He's not equal to the one who can see. Who can see? Jesus. But Muhammad in the hadith is not a blind no more. Allah told him a lot of secrets. Where the sun set? The sun set in a warm spring of water. Oh, this is naive. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, we approve the other hadith in Sahih Bukhari. Okay, no problem. We go Sahih Bukhari. It's more horrible. <laughs> According to your prophet, the sun goes every day from point A to point B. And this is how the sun set. Allah, and I replied, Allah and, Muhammad, and, and the apostle, no, Muhammad, you love this sentence. I replied, Allah and his apostles know best, associating the knowledge of God with the knowledge of a man who says silly stuff like this. So when a Muslim, he go crazy saying translation is wrong, all your translation is false, and I challenge this person to name for us one translation the Muslims accept, just one. I mean, is it impossible? From hundreds of Muslims' translations, can they accept one translation? If they cannot, then you cannot complain about Osama Daktok. Because obviously, you are afraid to say, I accept a translation, because that translation will get you busted. Otherwise, how in the world all Islamic translation is not accepted by Muslims? And if the Quran is a book in Arabic, how a Pakistani guy who do not know how to read Arabic, he is going to learn his religion? How a guy from Indonesia, he will learn about Allah, Mr. Fatha, Mr. Dhamma, Mr. Mr. Kasra, he knew those things? As an example, if you go and read where the sun set in the Quran, you will find the Muslim, they say, like in Indonesian, as I heard, the Indonesian, they told me uh, that... Uh, it says ocean. In the Quran, they translate the word spring of water as ocean. But where is the word ocean there? 
Are you going to make a video that says this is a lie? It's not an ocean. It is a spring of water. Here the translation here says spring of water. We changed it suddenly it became ocean. <laughs> but there's a huge difference between an ocean and a spring of water. And when the Muslim they try to explain this hilarious stupidity in science, they say, well, don't you go to the ocean and brother Alexander the Great or Azul Kurnain, when he saw the sun sitting in the ocean, it got dark. So this is from his perspective, brother. Where is where it says from his perspective? Where it says that the Quran failed to make it clear. The Quran failed to make it that this is what Zul Qurnain he saw. No, the Quran saying he found it. Not he thought. He found it. He found what? He found the sun sitting in a spring of muddy water. How the water is muddy? Explain to me. Oh, the, when the sun goes in the uh, in the ocean, it looks like it's murky. Really, it is. <laughs> and does it say in the in the Quran? It looked like it's murky, or it says in a spring of murky water. So, my friends, what a Muslim he complain about translation. He is complaining about how stupid the Quran and how confusing. For we showed you that their translation themselves is totally different from each other for the same verse. Not a single translator, he translate the same as the other one. All of them, they add bracket. All of them, they move the word Jesus from here to there. All of them, they add the word Rabbi. All of them, they move it around to fix it. And can you fix it? Good luck with that. Thank you very much for being here. I hope this video was good for you guys to learn something. And I hope this person, he will have the courage and say, you know, Christian Prince, I would like to call you and debate your life. I will be happy to have him. I will speak to you kindly, nicely, and I will speak to you with respect. If you have the courage to say, I will call you. You are more than welcome. But I know you will not do it. You don't dare, do you? And you know what? We can make a debate about, it's a clear Quran. This is what you said in the video. It's a clear Quran. I want to see how clear the Quran. I mean, it's very funny when the Muslims they say it's a clear Quran, when the Quran says the Quran is not a clear. You will not find a single Muslim scholar agree with other scholars. The only agreement the Muslims have about the Quran that we agree about not to agree about the meaning of this verse. And this is why I say to him, do you agree with any Islamic interpretation? Name one. Name one. A challenge. Ibn Kathir, Al-Qurtubi, Al-Jalalain, Ibn Abbas, choose one. Do you agree with any of them? He will not dare to say I agree with any of them. Why he will not dare? Because the second he say I agree with this person, Islam is doomed. So you agree with who? With nobody, including Osama Dakdok. For we are terrified, for Islam is a fraud. And this is the book, the Quran in front of you. It says it clearly that the Big portion of the Quran is a clear and big portion of the Quran is not a clear. So which one is a clear for you and which one is not a clear? Everyone give you his op opinion. And nobody knows the meaning of the verses of the Quran save Allah. How come this is not does not go for the verse about Jesus? <laughs> how come you know? <laughs> when the Quran says, and how silly it is that there's a God, he will say to you, I'm going to send you verses, and those verses, nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. So why he's giving it to you? Isn't it the Quran says that this is a book of guidance? No, the Quran says the opposite. It says those who follow those verses are going to be misleaded. Read carefully. Those who have illness in their heart, they follow those verses. So you follow the Quran, there's verses in the Quran, they are made, they are designed, they are existed to deceive you. 
in the Quran called the scholars. Who is the scholars? He says, and those who are firmly grounded in knowledge, they say, we believe in the book. So in Islam, to be a scholar is not someone he, he is a scholar, it's someone he say, we believe in the book. <laughs> and those who follow the book, they are misleaded. Read it carefully. Imagine the Quran saying that those there's part of the Quran which is confusing, weird, stupid. But those who have a problem in their heart, the, the sick ones, the bad ones, they follow those verses. Why you make them so why you make them confusing? Why, why you don't make them clear? And is it possible that a decent person he followed them too? Is it true that there is decent people who go and believe in stupid things around the world? And people take their money and people like, let us say, read the future, etc. So are those are not bad, they are bad people? No, they are misleaded. So even the idea of who is bad in the Quran is stupid. Following the Quran will make you a bad person in the Quran. And by the way, if we change the translation here, I mean, maybe this translation is not good for you. What translation you you want to read? Horrible. Look how it became big trying to explain that this is a stupid book. We have to add a lot of a bracket in order to explain something simple. And the other, not entirely clear. I mean, do you see how good the Quran is? The Quran is written by an author. He is saying to you, my book is not all of it clear. There's a lot of it is not clear. So if you follow it, you are sick. And people who seek it, they are following problems. <laughs> I mean, what a disaster. What a silly, stupid book. Today we don't have too many people because we did not give people time to know that we are live on air. Uh, we are thinking to make a Discord. Somebody he sent me an email, uh, sent me uh, uh, like uh, an idea. I check it out. We will see it's called Discord. So we will see if we would create one so people can join us in the chat. We are just trying to avoid problems with YouTube because they are all over the place, as you know. So I want to say thank you very much for being here. Uh, supposedly tomorrow I will be here uh, you know, early morning. But we don't know. I might change the time, but I might be there. Mostly I will be there. If not, I will change the time because I wasn't planning really to do this today. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. And we'll see you soon again. Christ is our Lord. And we say, God bless you, Brother Osama Dakto. You did a great job translating the book. And if your Quran is messed up, don't blame it on other people. And we show the people your text, your own text line up exactly as it's lined up in the book of Osama Dakto. Your translation, your own words. We put it in the screen. People saw it. People did read it. People, they took a, a screenshot of it. This is not the translation of Osama Dakto. That is your translation. Is it different from translation of Osama Dakto? That's yours, my friend. What a what what a what a deceiving book. What a deceiving book. And here I want to ask the Muslims a question. Can I be a Muslim without being a scholar in Arabic then? Because it looks like there's a fatha, and that will change the whole thing. So how you poor poor you? in Indonesia, Pakistan, etc., are going to know this. They will say to you, oh, you have to follow the scholars. But you just said, the one who obeyed the scholars is doing an act of worship. He took him as Lord. And this is why I say always, stupidity is amazing. Thank you. God bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we see you soon again. Take care.